Hey everybody, Portland Chess Shop here to bring you the chess action, and we have round five of the chess.com Grandmaster Deathmatch. We have uh, GM Shankland uh, as white against GM Hess as black, two of the strongest U.S. chess players, and it is a good match. Hess is up two and a half to one and a half, but it's not a really significant advantage it is a close match, and we are going to take a Mystery of Chess boxing interlude. Chess break. Hold on one moment. A game of chess is like a sword fight. You must think first before you move. So those are big changes are made. I feel that, um, you know, Hess won the first couple of games, and I think that Shankland uh, decided that his advantage against Hess is in the end game. So we're going to be sh seeing Shanklin moving, fighting, pushing towards the end game, trying to use some of his end game, um, end game ability. It looks like it seems like Shanklin is proficient in the end game, while Hess uh, has some dangerous stuff up his sleeve in the middle game and opening. So that's why, as White in this position, uh, Shanklin decided to maneuver the position towards an end game. Knight G4 is played, attacking. Some F2, some some mischievous ideas here. I'm not sure what White is going to have to do. He may be forced to play like F3 or E3 or something. E3 would be pretty bad <laughs> blocking in this, this dark squared bishop. So we see Shanklin is down a little bit of time. So both these players are rated like 2650 or something. Uh, Knight, Knight comes to the center. This move looks like I should have seen it. It looks like the best move. It defends this pawn as well as attacks this bishop. But the knight takes anyway. Oh, and there's a check. But then a bishop blocks. And now uh, e5 or g5 is going to be able to take take this. So this is an interesting tactic. So now the bishop is going to fall. The uh, So it's going to be six pawns against... Six pawns, but look, at this pawn is going to be the isolated pawn at the end of this series of exchanges. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like white is possibly a little bit better here because of these, because of this isolated pawn. This isolated pawn in this position looks pretty weak. I mean, this d5 square is controlled because uh, white decided to play one c4. Attacking and controlling the d5 square, and he has kept control of that. I like his uh, his pawn structures. His pawn is like two fences, but this king is a little bit exposed, I think. The pawn moves up one square. This position does favor white, but uh, black is going to be playing h5, h4 to try to create some weaknesses so that he could get some nasty checks, potentially, uh, in the position. Also, h5 creates luft for his own king so that there's no back rank mate threats. The king will be able to run to h7 potentially. Uh, obviously, the queen is here blocking that square. But you just, you're thinking, you're not always like calculating, you know, 13, 10 moves ahead, but you're calculating, but you're like thinking about what could happen, how the position could change. And uh, so the, this rook defends the pawn. I think that. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty passive rook. In a, in a position like this, it's all about the activity of your pieces. This rook uh, prophylactically controls a lot of key squares. So not, nothing, you know, really is happening in this position at this second. Uh, so you just want to kind of control some key squares. This queen does come to d5. Seems good. Like, I mean, look at this queen. It just sort of controls a lot of, a lot of squares. Seems like a good queen. I like this queen. I think this position favors white, but we're going to have to see how white tries to, you know, uh, push the advantage. It could be a, a draw type position as well if uh, white doesn't find a way to create two weaknesses, really. There's a principle of two weaknesses that Nimzovich came up with. And uh, the principle is that you want to create two weaknesses in your opponent's position because then you can. Uh, you know, put pressure on both the weaknesses uh, one at a time, and then one of the weaknesses will fall. So, like, you, there's a weakness on the queen side, weakness on the king side. You attack the queen side weakness, and then uh, your opponent tries to defend that, and then you swing over to the king side, attack that weakness. That's kind of an idea. So, here the rooks could be exchanged. 
which kind of surprises me because I think that uh, White has the better pawn position here. I think that Shanklin has really decided that he has an end game advantage against Hess. He learned pretty quickly after those first two games not to mess with Hess in the opening. But these pawns are doubled, and this f f5 square is pretty weak. Like, if the king moves to e4 at any point, then the king could move here, but then I guess this pawn would fall as well. So neither king can really move, so it's a potential for a Zugzwang uh, position. I will explain Zugzwang again because it seems like it's one of Shanklin's uh, primary uh, grandmaster attacking ideas. The Zugzwang is when, um, it means, what does it mean? It means, like, uh, in between move, and it's German, and it, uh, it, no, it doesn't mean in between move, sorry. But Zugzwang is when you lose because you have to move. Like, you, if you could just pass, then, like, it would be a draw, but because you have to move, you make, you're forced to make a move that is, uh, that is bad, like, you know, retreating your, moving your king backwards, for example, and, uh, then your opponent is able to, take advantage of that and 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 just simply win the game. So uh, we see Black in a long think because he is afraid of being in a Zugzwang. Like if he plays um, like pawn up one, then this pawn can just move up one. He like basically runs out of moves is what he's afraid of. So this is a Zugzwang type position. If the king moves backwards, then it could be just the end because this king is going to be moving forwards. And But then the king could move back and forth here, baby. We'll see how he has to finish it. We're going to be seeing the uh, a Zugzwang in this position. Black is down a lot of time trying to find a way. Sometimes you can do like a little like triangle with your king in order to uh, gain back the tempo and then put your opponent in Zugzwang, um, which is pretty, I don't know, pretty funky. I am not a uh, Grandmaster Zugzwang player. It's probably a weakness in my game. He decides to move the king back. King comes forward and then king over. See, that's how that little like triangle thing? Trying to make his opponent's king move back again and then he'll, his opponent will be in Zugzwang is the idea. The king moves to c7. So the uh, this square is controlled by this pawn, which is pretty important. He can't... He could play... Uh, he has potential for an f5 break, but he doesn't really have potential for a g4 break because uh, this pawn is just going to shoot to a queen. So, he has two Zugzwang moves that he could play. He he could play a3, a4, force his opponent to move, but at the same time, uh, it just doesn't look like there's a way. So, f5 is played. That's the uh, break that I was speaking about. Try to create two weaknesses of the position. Like, if it exchanges bait, the king will take back. There will be a weakness on this square as well as a weakness on this square. Pretty good chess match. So the king moves over, trying to save the king's the the key squares. Somebody in the chat is is saying f6, but I'm not sure if that's the move. Uh, takes is played. Now the king moves back over, so this square is very weak. If he could exploit it, he decides to play a4, going all the way for the big big a4 move. I thought he was going to hold the Zugzwang, potentially. So is Black and Zugzwang in this position? Black moves here. The king comes here. Yeah, it looks like this is a Zugzwang. So now we have a race. The race is off. I think that, uh, let's see, does, does White queen first? White's trying to queen the A-pawn. Black's trying to queen the H-pawn. 22 seconds for Hess. It seems like, yeah, Sh Shanklin won by resignation. This pawn was just queening first. And the game was over.